amazing guest today, and it's a man, as you can see. He, he might like to work out a little bit. I'm not, it's kind of hard to tell. <laughs> Anyway, the tattoos this, cover everything. <laughs> this is Steve Chamberlain, and he has a charity organization called 50 Legs, where he gets uh, kids, legs, amputees, legs, a lot, mostly for kids, a lot for kids, but you do adults too. Yeah, what's, when we started, it was for kids, like kids and vets. Yeah. But then, you know, we get all these applications coming in where it was everybody, you know, from, you know, the oldest person I helped was 94 year old, World War II oh. Merchant Marine. And uh, since he's passed, but I mean, he was he was the coolest guy, like, cause he had a leg from a different prosthetic company and it was just, you know, he was older, so they didn't really give him what he really want, needed, you know, to get, mm -hmm. live a normal life, you know? So yeah, he was the oldest and probably the coolest. His stories were awesome. Aww. So, I mean, we get a lot of cool stories. I mean, not cool stories, but you know, no, I get tragic it, yeah. stories that turn good, you know, after we help them. So yeah, that's pretty awesome. Powerful. So through a series of events that I don't want to, it's too long to go into right now, but I was able to meet Steve, and then as soon as you meet Steve, you become part of the 50 Legs family, Aww. and he works with, um, what's Stan's? Stan Patterson, POA, Prosthetics and Orthotics of Orlando. Yeah. Is, you know, we've sent everybody to the POA offices, you know, Tennessee, Chattanooga, where that lady's from, mm -hmm. um, and, it, you know, we got one in Hawaii now. Uh, we've mm. helped uh, 17 kids wow. from Hawaii already wow. uh, in the last two years. So, in, in you know, we got uh, Chattanooga, POA Orlando is the main office, is the one I send everybody to. Over 650 people and no complaints. So, our, our stats amazing. are pretty good, you know? Oh, yeah. So, yeah, it's, we've been very, very blessed to find Stan. It was unfortunate accident from a little girl that got, um, she was 16, she got, her, her cousins were on jet skis and she lost her leg and she, her parents reached out, her mom reached out to me and said, hey, I'm going to a company in Orlando and I was looking for a prosthetic company to, to partner up with to help all these people. And when I met Stan, I just told him what I was doing. He's the best Christian guy. I mean, he doesn't cuss, drink, he doesn't, and then he meets me and I look like this. And I'm like, hey, what's up, man? Like, it was just like, you're like, oh man, what's he gonna say now? And I told him what I was trying to do and he's like, I'm in. And wow. since, you know, we've helped over 600 and something people and no complaints and, um, he, you know, I can call that guy on a, on a Friday night and he's open on Saturday for me. Mm. Uh, it's just, it's, it's been a blessing. I mean, it's, it's, you know, like I tell everybody, it's just, I'm just a passenger and God's, you know, the, the driver of this amazing journey I've been on for 11 years. And to be able to change somebody's life for the positive is, is probably the most rewarding thing you could ever do. You know, money in the world doesn't buy happiness. It's what this mission's been be, and, and has become is where we're at today and the, you know, the board members we have and like meeting people like Julie and, and you know, uh, TCT's been helped us and it just, it's been a blessing, like honestly, uh, and it's fun, you know, the stories are crazy, uh, you know, like we're helping a poor young lady from Jacksonville that just lost her leg to a shock attack, mm -hmm. you know, like oh, a couple weeks ago and you know, all the lawnmowers, we it just, the stories wow. never get old, you know? All right, so tell them, well, I, and I didn't give him a proper uh, introduction, but we'll get to all that. Yeah. Um, but tell him what the number one loss of legs for kids is under uh, 10. Under 10, yeah, mm -hmm. lawnmowers. Real wow. Yeah, like one way, you know. No. You mean the drive? The, everyone. All of I them? I mean, I've really? got stories, I, yeah, any type. Like, uh, I, like, the first girl we helped was a little Ireland Nugent. She's, I'm actually taking another prosthetic company tomorrow when I fly home. She's, she's, a, she's a beautiful little girl. She was three, uh, two and a half when it happened. So the family reached out to me right away. <clears throat> it was the same weekend as the Boston Marathon. So I'm at the hospital and then all of a sudden I see boom, boom, boom and all this stuff going on in Boston. Mm -hmm. One of my buddies called me from Boston and says, hey, one of my cousins just got hurt in the marathon. We need 50 legs in Boston. I'm like, all right, cool. So I let that die down because Everybody was starting charities when that happened. You know what I mean? That was their go-to thing. Oh, well, I'm helping the Boston. Like, we legitly helped them. Like, I've helped, I think we were at six, and then, you know, some of them went to other places, and then there's a few of them. There's, like, f three or four that still go to the prosthetic company that we, we use. So, I mean, that's been the biggest blessing with that girl. I remember her when I met her family. She was laying in the feeding tubes and all this stuff in her, you know what I mean? She just mm -hmm. lost both her legs. So I met the dad, I walked in, I said, hey man, listen, I'm just here to help you. I said, don't worry about legs. 
and he calls me Uncle Steve-O. She calls, she's the only one that calls me Uncle Steve-O. And I said, why do you call me Uncle Steve-O? And her father said, because you had a halo of your head when you sent that, set our mind at ease. Oh. So it literally just took oh. all the fuss, thinking, how am I gonna help my kid? Mm. You don't think of, like, when I lost my leg, I didn't know anybody with a prosthetic leg. Mm. Nor did it affect my life ever. When I seen somebody, you're like, oh man, I hope that never happens to me. You say ignorant things because you just don't know any better. Mm. So now that I'm like, this guy that's helping all these kids and, and grown-ups, it's like, I'm so protective of that situation mm -hmm. because I used to hide my leg with a pair of sweatpants because I was embarrassed of it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because I was yeah. like, oh, well, it's this big jacked up guy and now I'm like, I'm different. Yeah. So to me, it was like an emotional thing to get over that myself. So when I, when I started helping these kids, I was like, wow. I'm being so vain to worry about a leg. And I'm like, I, these kids have no legs and, you know what I mean? So to yeah, me, it was like, I just totally snapped out of it. Yeah, like, but you know, it's a new norm, right? Yeah. And so you helping them mentally and emotionally to process that. How, how long you've had yours? 23. Well, yeah. See, when yeah. you started 20 years ago, I don't know if they had Memorial all Day. the different options that they have now. Crazy. Yeah. Right. They have a lot of options now. Right. And then when I was in the hospital, you know, I wish I had a Steve Chamberlain and 50 mm, legs yes. because I'm in the hospital going, what the heck am I gonna do? Like, That's what I mean. Yeah. You know, I'm, my legs ripped off. I was 29 years old. I was 300 pounds, all jacked up. And I'm going, you know, what? what's what's life gonna be like? And then I was like, you know what? I'm gonna wrestle. <laughs> like in my head, I'm like, I'm going back to wrestling. Mm -hmm. So let's, so you're a semi, former semi-pro football player, amateur hockey player, pro, pro wrestler, and you lose your leg. Uh, okay, so you were in a motorcycle accident. Yep. By the way, he still rides motorcycles. And he drives a big monster truck. <laughs> <laughs> I took a video of it one day. I'm like, I gotta see how you get in this truck. Here he, oh, there he is. <laughs> I'm like, I'm gonna tear out a hip trying to get in this, if I ever me? try to get in the car. It That's is, what he is. He's just... and he's got his, his oh, um, prosthetics on his right leg. I'm like, how do you drive? Oh, I'm better than, <laughs> you learn how to drive with the other leg. Right? No, no, I drive, no, I drive, I use this one. Oh, oh really? Like, yeah. I get pulled over. I get, you know, I drive pretty not normal. Like I, I'm from Boston. Now. Like but I, I mean, grow but, but fast. driving with your leg, and it kind of a feel thing, though. You yeah. Know? Well, that, I mean, 23 years. I mean, I could. That's when I wrestled, idea. I could literally touch your stomach and know like where to stop. You know what okay. I mean? Because it becomes you. part of you at that point. You yeah. know. It's like anything, you know what I mean? If you have something wrong with you, ailment or something, you just deal with it mm -hmm, or, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? You learn to live with it, you know? So like this, I tell people all the time, you know, like with legs, you know, like one of the girls that I help get legs, she's, um, she lost her leg in a motorcycle accident and she still rides, she still does stunts. She literally had a video on Facebook the other day of doing a wheelie and crashing. That's what like, you love. I'm out of um, feeling mm -hmm. uh, down and feeling as though you had you had lost. What am I going to do now? Yeah. You were able to come out of that. Yeah. Tell us about some of the, the people that you have helped to come out of that mindset that life is over. I mean, that's my biggest thing is <clears throat> when I go see people in the hospital and I'm always like, that, like for instance, Claire Bridges, the, the girl that, the model that, you know, had got the COVID and she ended up losing both her limbs. You know, I got to go, to me, I just tell the truth. Like, I'm not gonna sugarcoat anything because it's just not reality. Mm -hmm. So to me, it's the reality part of like, life is different. Like you literally, I, I wish to God I'd just take a normal shower. Like today at the hotel, like it's a game of when I'm gonna fall. There's nothing to grab inside the shower I was in. You literally, your mind's like, I have to crawl into the shower and stand up when I get in the shower because if it's wet and if I jump in and slip with one leg, I'm going down, you know? So I literally crawl into the shower, stand up, and it's like, you know, you, you always think, I'm like, people ask me all the time, what's the one thing you miss? Taking a shower. Wow. You know what I mean? Just the stupid Something little things you, everybody takes for advantage, you know what I mean? Let me mention this, what about if you just put, you know, something on the floor, does that, does that make a difference or not? You know, well, not like, for that. Like I mean, my house is equipped for it. Like, something. I have a chair that I sit in when I, I take you. a shower. So yeah. I, I it's use my crutches to get in. Right. And I have a big enough shower where I get in, sit in my chair, clean myself, yes. and you know what yeah. I mean, get out. Yeah. But when you're away, I travel a lot. So like when I'm going away, you know, I've, I've broken probably like three or four showers, like wow. just when I'm in a hotel and I grab yeah. something. Cause you're in your mind, you like just grab Why whatever. Why don't you make sure you get a handicap room? Uh, but a lot of them don't really have the accessible ability you need for are those more for wheelchairs? Yeah, yeah. Well, they have ones for wheelchairs and stuff like that. So I never take those because I don't want anybody to be without. Couldn't you wear one of those swimming legs? 
Yeah, I mean, I, I would, but and then you still got to take it off, clean your legs. So to me, it's just easier just doing just it. Get out in there there. And get yeah, it just down. like, yeah. hey, listen. Well, that's the other thing they do. They get make sure uh, kids get the swimming leg. Every kid, every kid. I, I'm, I'm my biggest thing in the world is like insurance companies won't buy kids running legs. It's not a necessity. So non necessity means little Johnny can't play with the other kids because he exactly. can't afford a running leg. So the, my biggest thing, and Stan Patterson's also, is and everybody that's a board member of my charity knows. I don't care. I'll get yelled at. <laughs> you know what I mean? I just spend our money because it's the right thing to do. I believe every kid should, if they want to run, sure. if they want to swim, sure. if you want to do something where I mean, we buy a kids' legs. I mean, we get firemen. Fire legs made for high heat and back oh, to duty. Oh, nice. So to me is, and that's a non necessity. A guy saving your life, worrying about wow. his leg. You know what I mean? So like yeah. to me, what the insurance companies don't do is what we do. Yeah. We we like let people live their lives to be normal again. You know that's exactly. the gist of Fifty Legs, and it's always been like that. Yeah. You know, for eleven years and yeah. hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people that we've helped and we've been blessed enough to meet. You know, meet the families. I mean, there's not a day. I mean, I'll get messages today. Like, it's cr every day I get a message thanking. Uh, you know, thank wow. you so much. It's like I don't need a pat on the back. I really don't. No, mm -hmm. do I want one? I do it because it it helps so many people and families get their lives back. I mean, the parents. You know, like how you know you guys have kids. You imagine if you couldn't afford a little Johnny to play a sport that he dies to play, you know what I mean? Like we got legs for golf and we got legs for swimming, we got legs for running, you know? We have so many little girls and, the, and boys in the Junior National Paralympics. And, and last year, I remember I told you like last year was the first time I went to one of them. And I never cried so bad. Wow. Because I seen these kids and the families, how much it meant for me to be there for them. I'm gonna tear up now, little baby. <laughs> but. Well, that's the reward for is. you. Yeah, you know? it is, it yeah. was. Yeah. It literally changed my life, and I said, I'll never miss another one. So, yeah. And you said, I haven't. Wow. <laughs> so I went this year to Colorado, and, and you know, and it just, it, you don't realize, when I started this, I didn't realize it'd be like this. You know, I didn't think it'd be mm -hmm. so successful, never mind successful, never, just all the people that we help. And we have to do this every year because these kids come back twice a year. Mm -hmm. You know, like I told you, like it's it's not like you get one leg and you're good. I mean, these kids grow. Yeah, yeah. Well, who's the one? Um, I can't remember <clears throat> her name. The in Louisville, the one that has is running and has the. Oh, Katie Bug. Yeah. She's yeah. She's she's amazing. She's uh, she's she's just. I mean, she's sponsored by Toyota. She's 13. So her mom says, like, when she's uh, running. Like, like her leg, one leg gets bigger, and then when she's not running, right. it gets smaller. Yep. So then you got to adjust for all that. Yep. She comes twice a year, also. Okay. She's above the knee too. So when she runs, um, she don't have a knee in her running leg yet because she was always too young. But now she's old enough and big enough. I mean, she's grown. Oh my God, it's crazy how big these kids get. You know, the other day I seen <clears throat> we helped this one girl from. Um, <sighs> I forget what the heck she said, but she flies herself here and we pay for her hotel and her legs for the kid. And we've been doing that for, oh my God, I want to say 10 years. So I seen her, I didn't see her for two years because of COVID and she, her family couldn't fly out of the country. So I seen her the other day and I was like, my God, girl, how old are you? And she was like, 14. I'm like, oh my God, I remember you when you were four. You know what I mean? So I've seen wow. all this transition to these, these kids like, I'm like, God bless. It's like, so, wow. so let me ask you this. So is there classes or is there anything that you do to help them get past it mentally, emotionally, and, you know, or is it just what you do actually does all that? You know, the, the company that I use, the POA in Orlando, it's the biggest company in the, in the world, uh, prosthetic size wise. You know, it's like 30,000 square feet. You know, they, got, they do all the work in house. Gotcha. Okay. So what we did, what Stan did was he opened it up and he has a couple of rooms for people that want privacy. Mm -hmm. Not one time have I seen anybody in those rooms because he's got 10 to 25 people there a day. And, and, and you've seen it. And you, the two you dogs, know. the two and dogs the dog that run around. Just passed away. Aww. Yeah, killed. Oh, that's, they love you to throw the tennis ball to them. Yeah, they don't stop that. So to me, you see these kids and families, everybody's story is so different where when they're, t like it'd be like us talking right now, every one of us has such a different life. Right. Obviously, look at me. I'm, 
tatted up. I drive motorcycles. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, you you literally see these these kids and families growing together mm -hmm. and telling their stories and what worked for them and what don't work for them at these other places. 85% of my charity is helping people that went other prosthetic companies. So that's a sad, that's a sad oh. stat. To me oh. it is, you know, it's like, cause every, all these big companies, it's all about the money. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can't get a running leg issue you have 20 grand. I mean, mm. uh, are you kidding me? I paid 2,500. Yeah. That's why I get so many kids, mm -hmm. these awesome mm -hmm. legs. Awesome. So, to me, it's, you know, it's, and that's what's so good about POA in Orlando. You know, the lady that runs it, Stephanie Kingston, and, and, and Stan, and all the, all the people, Roger, and all the people that work out there, they get it. And they have amputees like Ricky that works on these kids. He does all my kids, and he's an amputee, so, and he lost his leg in a lawnmower accident, actually, too, wow. a long time ago. So he gets these kids, you know, and they, and they, they all, it's the POA 50 Lakes family, as I told you. It's mm -hmm. it's it's, wow. it's it's cool. I mean, it really is. It's 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 grown, and I, I I never thought we'd be where we're at. You know what I mean? Helping so many dang people, and like the stories just kill me. I said dang. I know. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty good. Pretty good. I know. Hey everyone, hope you enjoyed the video. To see more like this, be sure to hit the subscribe button below. Get all the latest content from TCT Ministries. We'd love to pray alongside you for God's blessings in your life, so you can email your prayer requests to prayer at tct.tv or click the link below and submit your request at tct.tv. God bless you and thank you for watching.